Hello everyone, this is Rukrana Mazzini and this is vlog. And in this vlog we will be speaking about Phrasing Inferno by Princeps Games. Princeps Games is a, a not so new publisher from Serbia because they already published uh, March to the Drina, which has been quite appreciated, a quite very good war game, and uh, now they are proposing a new system, a new system uh, that came after a very successful Kickstarter campaign. This is the result, and this system has been applied for the first time here about the Winter War. Uh, we all know the Winter War, at least all the World War II aficionados know the Winter War between Soviet Union on one side and Finland on the other side. We are. At the end, November 1939, we will be uh, arriving in 1940. Uh, that is two months, exactly two months after uh, the first attack by Germany on Poland, so after the official start of World War II. Um, the situation is very interesting because, well, Ah, never happens. Yeah, uh, Soviet Union, it's a very uncommon in history, uh, decided to invade a neighbor country, in this case uh, Finland, after some diplomatic uh, negotiations that went on forever and forever, and that was a big, big attack by the Soviet Red Army against the uh, Finnish defenders. Uh, uh, the Finnish were ready, of course. Here we see the Mannerheim line areas, all Finland. Okay, the map continues up there because yeah, Finland is longer than a than wider, so the map is in vertical. This is the map of the game, and you see there is another third Soviet force up there. Uh, this is one of the possible setups for this uh, for for this game, and we are three main force main Soviet forces pushing against the Finnish defenders. We all know the historical situation, the Soviets thought that they had the numerical and quantitative, quantitative and even qualitative advantage over the Finnish. It was not so, because they made many mistakes, they let the Amorid um, uh, spearheads uh, to go too far from uh, from their infantry. They got is isolated. The Mannerheim line was much more uh, stable than uh, what had been uh, foreseen. Uh, the weather conditions were much harsher, and there were problems with the equipment. Finland managed to get some international support as well. So, at the end, yes, the invasion was successful, but only partly successful. Finland managed to survive, and then there was Barbarossa, and some of the Finnish troops attacked the Soviet Union, and there was a continuation of the war in 1944, and so on and so on. Um, anyway, this is 1940. This is the first invasion of Finland by the Soviet Union. And in this game that I will describe, now we are getting to the game, as a not so light war game. Why? Because it has all the appearance of a light war game. Hmm? A nice map, this is a double face map. Uh, on the other side of the map there is a more war gamey map, okay? Less color, less mm, nice with less frills and so on. This reminds me a bit of the Panzer General. Let's get a closer look. This reminds me of the Manner line, line, okay? Uh, this reminds me of the Panzer General uh, video games, okay? It's more or less the same style. On the other side of this map there is a the same map in another version, more war gamey, let's say, but I think that it's ugly, even for our uh, usually not so attractive standards of war games. So I will be using this one, even if I don't know why they did not put the name of this. The smaller cities, all the, the objective cities. Uh, while the other maps they are there. Why? Okay, readability. Hmm. I would have liked it, you know where. Vipuri is, for example, or Triarvi, or other famous cities involved in the campaign. Anyway, uh, other thing of the presentation, here are the units. The units you have not 
thoroughly identify units, regiment number 5, number 16, and blah blah blah, and this division, this battalion, but they are generic troops uh, that are identified by the number of pieces that are on a single X. Those are the strength points that combine with the uh, attack or defense uh, values give the actual strength uh, of uh, of an unit and these units also have uh, okay also have movement values for the infantry uh, the ground units or uh, here we are with artillery okay also for h which stands for four axis this is the range and the same thing for the air units okay this is the fighters and there are the bombers uh, etc etc and there are also uh, special units like HQs that will be useful in supply to determine if the unit is in supply or not and even anti-aircraft guns uh, can, that can respond to enemy air raids therefore axis of, of range of diameter they cover uh, they have a defensive area they create a defensive bubble um, these are the Finnish troops, and then we have the Soviets, the Soviet troops, you see. Oh, by the way, these graphics have been uh, curated by, uh, been made by Wojciech Zaleski. There is uh, our dear friend for our Italians, because we always have him, we're, uh, it's nice, we're very happy to have him at our Italian conventions, the owner of Tactica e Strategia, the Polish uh, publisher and he made the graphics for this game and you see that the, 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 the Soviet artillery but then we have the infantry so very nice and you use those columns to determine the, the strength points hmm? uh, the, in the campaign there was also the possibility of downloading some STL files so that you could print with laser with 3D printer sorry uh, some miniatures to use instead of the uh, counters, but I like more the counters. Um, this I am a bit traditional. Um, so uh, how doesn't I think work? Uh, very easy. You see that anyway with all these strange things. Okay, these nice presentations looks like a bit access and Alice. No, it is not access and Alice. First of all, it is an accent counter. Then I finish. That is. Sonic, it's a counter war game with uh, zones of control, uh, lines of retreat, supply, supply lines, uh, <laughs> uh, arms coordination, everything, like in interactive movement, reaction movement, everything is there. It is only very simple, it's very streamlined. And yes, even a 14 or 15 year old boy or girl could easily easily understand it and uh, and play and play with it that is why it is fantastic as a first war game it is not no more complicated after all than comments and calls comments and calls has some elements that are even more complicated how does it work at the beginning of your turn uh, first of all you determine oh you have also nice Eight charts that are in in the box. At the beginning of your turn, you uh, oh, even even before, more uh, very interesting. Uh, you have uh, a, a blind setup at the beginning of the game. The two players have this mini map, like this, in which they say, okay, we'll put a tank here, tank unit here, an infantry unit, an anti-aircraft unit there, and then they reveal the setups and then they make the setups. Uh, there is also an advanced setup option which uh, does not work in the basic setups that you okay you have uh, f mm, eight infantry units each of these units has five strength points and that's it the advanced setup says you have 40 strength points of infantry you can divide them as you like because we can uh, those units can exchange for example if these units has lost uh, three Three strength points. These other units can say, "Okay, we will be sending these guys uh, into your position to reinforce you." And so you have, so in this way, you simulate first and second lines and so on. And also, this can be made in the setup. This adds a lot of replayability 
high variability and, and a very interesting blind bluff level at the beginning of the game, which is fine for such a simple game. Very nice. And uh, so this is the setup. Of course, the manual gives you, because it is also a solid bot, this, the manual gives you, this manual can be, this rubber can be downloaded, gives you some uh, typical setups that can be decided at random. These are the most balanced ones, the one that I am using here. Or they can be just chosen, for example, if you don't know how, how should I set up this is the first time that I play this game. Oh my god, no panic, no panic. You already have some recommended setups in the in view book. But anyway, it is free setup. After the free setup, you begin with the turns. First thing, first thing of uh, of the turns, uh, you have eight rounds. The Soviet the Soviet player has eight rounds to uh, control three major, at least two out of three uh, major cities in uh, in Finland, and then at the beginning of the of each turn, you have eight turns. At the beginning of each turn, uh, which round to be more accurate, uh, at the beginning of each round you determine which units are in supply and units are in supply if they are at the very most seven, seven axes from your, uh, from your command, but the very first, even before supply, the very first thing you do in a round is to do a card. These cards, you see the numbers, each of these cards belongs to a specific round, there is a deck with 24 cards three possible cards for every round at the beginning of the game you just take only for example only one out of three cards for turn one same for two two three etc up to eight the other cards are put back in the box so you don't know what will happen you draw the card you flip the card and the cards has lots of historical events lots of historical content and after that they say, okay, for this turn, the uh, Soviet infantry has uh, a bonus of plus, plus one. On second, I don't know, of course, they are, they are face down. Okay, in this, uh, in this turn, the Soviet, are, uh, Soviet HQ are supplied to, to, to six axes, for example. Okay, after that, you determine which units are in supply, which are not, of course, the usual disadvantages for units not in supply. And then you activate your units quite freely, but a unit must finish all, all its activation before coming to the next unit. Uh, the, the, the Soviet player is the first one. Uh, so, for example, it says, okay, I have these tanks and I'm attacking you the manual line. So, how do we deal with that? This is a unit uh, with five strength points, five plus. 5, which is the attack value, this is 10. This is the Finnish infantry, and this Finnish infantry here has 5, has five uh, counters in the stack, 5 plus 3, this is the defense, but they are in a bunker. This is 10 to 8, with the modifiers on the map, it is 10 to 8, and I roll, and I look at these columns, where is 10 to 8? Okay, 10 to 8, here it is. We will be using this column of this minus 1 because this unit is in a bunker. And so we roll uh, we roll a dry, you see, for ground to ground combat. And we have the results. The results are very varied. But there can be also air attacks, uh, even before. But if uh, an air unit attacks here, it can be a counter-attacked by the air uh, anti-aircraft guns or even intercepted by Finnish air units so only there is an air-to-air -air. and after that the surviving air units will make an air-to-ground and so on and so on artillery can fire before artillery can uh, all the units first move and then, and then attack artillery is the only one that they can attack and then move so to give you for example, the possibility of uh, uh, fighting withdrawals or fire and movement, etc. You see, lots of nuances. Also, there are special national tactics that can be used by the Finnish and by the Soviets. They're all historically based. After the Soviet has moved, has activated all, 
hold his or her troops, then it's the finished turn. Same thing. And uh, after that, the turn is over. In some turns, more or less, in every once every three turns, three or two turns, you can have replacements, and those replacements are taken from a point, um, pool, from a pool of points, from a point value, point uh, general value, and these points as the production points, and they are based on the cities you still control on the map. Uh, but there are also, also, additional optional modules uh, for uh, let's say advanced weather conditions uh, technology espionage uh, also the diplomatic situation that can give you bonuses or maluses etc 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 and this after the first round is over you get to the second round or you, you flip the the second card and you you continue up to eight times or up until the Soviet player manages to keep for an entire round two major cities in Finland uh, out of three uh, and also he manages to still have five out of seven cities in uh, in the Soviet Union you can have some interesting counterattacks so in general what I think of this game well I think very highly of this game actually because uh, on the surface this is a very live war game as i said seems almost access and analyze stuff but really if you get a bit more uh, deeper a bit deeper into this game you begin playing it you will see that this game teaches you two things first of all the basic principles of uh, uh, of war games, Zox, CRTs, we have a CRT, we have full-fledged CRT, uh, combat result table, and it's not just uh, throw some dice and get on with it. Uh, also, you can uh, use uh, average dice with, uh, if, if you want, you can have more less eccentric results, so the dice that are more uh, Ponderated on the middle, on the average, average results. Oh, a normal D10 die. Um, and the second thing that this game teaches you is the principles of operation of warfare. We are in the years in which the operational art of warfare is forming up. Tukhachevsky uh, wrote his operational art of war after the 1920. Uh, mm, campaign uh, of the Soviet Union against Poland. So, uh, this game teaches you that you have to concentrate your forces, prioritize your targets, you have to create pockets or how to, to uh, organize the fighting withdrawal, you have to shorten your lines, uh, be careful about the supply lines, the advantages or disadvantages, or more HQs, or more decentralized maneuvers, or more directional directives, offensive directives, maneuvers, uh, the fact that, for example, airports, in many games you conquer airports, why? Because, well, oh, it's two or three victory points and that's it. Here you conquer, you understand the importance of conquering airports, why? Because when you conquer an airport, you can send your airports there and you will practically see your air coverage or your air range get deeper into the enemy territory if you manage to keep your air force together because you have a lots of attrition all of this is naturally is naturally given to you by the game it's not tables on the tables on the tables or variations or not variations. This is all depending on what really happens during the, the, the game. So that's why it is so dynamic. So everything is so streamlined. This is so natural. This is a very natural, with intuitive game, and I really love that. The fact is, many abstractions are so that the all infantry is equal in this game's Finnish and Soviets. Yes, but if you play deeper. You, if you had more, with, with, with more attention, you will see that it is not the same because the Finnish will have problems to have full units by the even by the mid game, 
but also the Soviet will have his or her problems in keeping uh, uh, reserve units, reserve fresh units, but you will understand the, 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 the importance of having fresh reserve units to uh, uh, so have a uh, sudden force to apply to a critical point. You will see on the map, move by move, what happens. It is not formally given to you by a, a set of, of abstract numbers. In a way, even with those abstractions, this is a much more practical war game. Field 7, we are here. D, 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 D. The idea that simple war games can give you a better cognitive experience, more knowledge, more awareness of the operations. Why? Because after half of the first turn, I assure you, we, you will be not, will not be uh, occupied with thinking about rules. So there is rules 14.2.3. How do I apply it? You will be focused not on the rules, but on the situation. And even all, with all their ex its extraction, its many extractions, this game will give you, will deliver to you the actual operational and even tactical situation. Even in a very simple rule set, which, yes, maybe loses some details, some immediate, some direct detail here and there, but really has a general intuitive, general streamlined, uh, a broader, gives you a broader awareness of what a uh, military campaign in World War II and in modern era in general really is like. So, and also this system is very versatile and I see that it could be applied to many military campaigns of this period and it will be because there is another Kickstarter incoming by Princeps Games about Kalkin Goal that is the almost contemporary campaign by Soviet forces against the Japanese forces in Manchuria. And it is coming and we use a, a very similar system, essentially the same system. Also, there is a solid bot, a solid bot priority based, which is very easy to manage. This is a game that is very easy to set up with, with random setups for the bot. So, it is a, a, a very Rich game that really deserves to be put on your table. And after that, it's beautiful. I imagine taking this in, also into a general club, board gaming club night, or into a general board gaming convention, with people that say, oh, board games are dull, they're not colored, they are tedious, they're boring, they're long. And you put this map, this giant, beautiful map, with these beautiful counters, and let's say, now let's play a war game. Now I'm going to show you what a war game really can be. Not so heavy, not so difficult. Yes, there are more detailed war games that are fine, they're fascinating, wonderful. And we can play that if you are interested. You can play those war games. But if you want, don't worry, we can be in with this. And you will have a very deep historical experience, a very involving historical experience, a very fun and entertaining historical experience. After that, we can get into more detail. Or we can even stay here because there is lots, lots of content of variables in the system. This is the real strength of these kind of games. And I'm very happy to, to have made this Kickstarter. I will be making the one about Karkin Gold and I will um, bring this war game to many conventions also to and especially to non war games to let them see okay war games can be bright can be colored but can be historical historically valuable very valuable and also very fun this is a game that in three hours at the most you play the entire campaign if you want to play the campaign once again with more detailed war games you can do no problems and uh, great many great fantastic war games about the winter war and uh, more classic more traditional war games no problems but you also have this alternative and also if you're a veteran war gamer as i am you will appreciate the freshness the, 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 the immediacy but once again the historical value the rendition of the historical value in this 
in this game even with other fellow veteran war games that they, okay we have just an evening to do i don't want to spend eight or nine hours or keep a, a game in multi-session let's take this out in three maximum four hours and with all the optional modules activated then you have a, a fairly good simulation and not bad simulation, not simplistic absolutely fairly good and deep simulation also the political elements and so you will appreciate it this is a very fun game i really i really recommend it <laughs> you see i'm a bit enthusiastic about this uh, but really this is a new interpretation of what war game is it is a modern very attractive presentation it is not once again absolutely not not exclusive uh, not mutually exclusive with other forms of more classical war games which we are all accustomed to which are all used to uh, and and it is a good game it is nice it is fun and it has a lot of historical value uh, now i will be closing here this episode uh, one advice go to the princess games uh, website download the rule book and see for yourself and uh, you will see just read the rule book and just by reading the rule book and even after that will be a few components etc but just by reading the book you will see the level detail that, that it is in this game and what can be taken out of this game as an experience what this game can give you as an experience a lot really a lot I'm very happy to see these european producers european publishing publishers get out with great great very good Wargaming products, such wargaming titles, such as this. This has been Freezing Inferno. Thank you, thank you very much for having me here. And uh, here it is. And uh, as always, thank you so much. Uh, have fun, take care, take care. And as always, remember, never forget, don't be scared, it's just wargames. Ciao.